I saw you on Countdown with Keith Olbermann mm -hmm. just after the findings of the accident came out. And I heard you say in so many words that the mission control team of this Columbia mission would never have passed muster with the likes of Chris Kraft and Gene Krantz during the days of Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo. They would have found a way to get them home. Of course, mm. because it was Gene Kranz who said on Apollo 13, failure is no option. Mm. Deke Slayton turned around and looked at the other astronaut, and he picked up the mic and he called the crew and he says, we're getting you back. Don't worry about it. Mm. We're getting you home. They immediately went to work 24-7, uh, working on in the simulators and figuring out exactly how to do it. Mm -hmm. And when you had Columbia take place, after seeing this huge chunk of foam that hit the uh, leading left part of the left wing, rather, the leading part of the left wing after hitting it, there were a lot of people that were afraid what happened did happen. And they tried to get them to take a look. They had five engineers from the Boeing Company make a study, and they came back with the opinion that it was like a styrofoam, uh, you know, cooler hitting your bumper on your car. Mm. It couldn't do any damage even at uh, 500 miles per hour, but they found out in a hurry that it could. Mm. But that's why the name of the chapter in the book is Had They Only Looked. Mm. Now, I was on the air uh, with uh, Lester Holt uh, at the time, and we, we started going, and I started explaining how they could have rescued them because Atlantis was already stacked and was in the barn ready to be rolled to the pad. Mm. They went up on a 16-day mission. Had they looked at first, they could have been working on getting a, the rescue vehicle up there during the 16-day flight. Mm. They had enough consumables on board to run into 30 days, and they had plenty of time to get, a, get the uh, other vehicle up there, and they could have rendezvoused and station kept uh, with each cargo bay facing one another, Using a lanyard, they could have transferred the crew out of Columbia, then dumped Columbia into the Pacific Ocean. And their reaction to that, when we talked about that, was, oh, that would have been fraught with danger. You like that word, fraught with danger? <laughs> well, what did they think those guys were in up there? Yeah. You know, they got a six-inch hole yeah. that you could put a bowling ball through in the left wing, and there's no way that they're going to come home. So they did come up. Well, Admiral, Admiral Gaiman... Uh, who headed up the commission, heard this on the air mm. because they were so fascinated with it that NBC wouldn't even take us off the air. They wouldn't stop for a commercial. <laughs> they kept going mm. uh, with this conversation Lester Holt and I had. And so Gaiman asked NASA, Admiral Gaiman asked NASA to come back with an answer. Could it have been done? Make a study. They reluctantly made a study and came back and said, yes, it could be done. Now, in the rules of flying the space shuttle today, mm. they, there must be a space shuttle ready to be launched within 30 days or you can't launch. Mm. And the only mission they're going to fly left in the shuttle program will be flown next year. It's a maintenance mission to the Hubble Space Telescope. That's the only one that will not go to the space station where the crew has a safe haven at the space station. Mm. And what they will do is that they will put uh, the shuttle Discovery, the way it is scheduled right now, on 39B. It will be sitting there when the other shuttle lifts off on 39A. It will stay on B during the whole time, ready to go, just in case something goes wrong during this maintenance mission. So they, they have adapted... They have adapted these procedures that we brought up. We had uh, Dr. Story Musgrave, the quintessential uh, spacewalker, on the program, and he showed us in 15 minutes how they could have made a spacewalk, the two guys on board, and inspected that mm -hmm. without hurting anything. Mm -hmm. But they chose to sit on their rears out there and mm -hmm. do nothing. Mm -hmm. And that was just that was the big difference of uh, the kind of people that you had on board back in Apollo 13. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to say, after saying all of this, Joy, mm -hmm. yes, we sir. have a lot of great people in Houston. There are great people out there doing good work. Of course. And they just got a little complacent on this, mm -hmm. and they just got a little more uh, arrogant with their own self-importance, and they didn't do the right thing on this. Anyone can make a mistake, but, uh, you know, this mistake cost us seven lives.